students uh, in this video unit lectures we all have discussed all about the respiratory organs and we are doing the comparative studies the comparative study we all have learned the respiration in various organism like we have discussed about earthworm spider then thereafter we have learned into the bony fish few extraordinary example of bony fish with the accessory respiratory organ also we all have discussed last lecture we have learned or we have studied the respiration into the amphibians now we go one class ahead that is the apes so today we will be talking about the birds the birds have the special respiratory mechanism now in birds also i have chosen one animal that is pigeon why i have selected because this pigeon is the pigeon is having a specialized accessory means they have the extra ordinary respiratory mechanism as i told you that we will always go with the specialized mechanism only Uh, means the animal which shows something extraordinary or they have some distinct feature so the pigeon have the ex, uh, extra respiratory organ that is acting as the reservoir of the gases so let us discuss about pigeon in detail now first we will be talking about the respiration so respiration in the case of the pigeon means in case of the bird only highly developed now why uh, it is required why it requires to develop the high uh, highly modified respiratory system in the case of the bird because we all know that they require sufficient oxygen their mode of life is aerial right so for flying they requires the extra energy now for if they require the extra energy they have to eat the large quantity of food now they eat large quantity of food so this food must be digested very fast so for fast digestion now what is the digestion of the uh, digestion digestion is the oxidation of the food that means they require the large amount of the oxygen so for that particular reason they cannot um, uh, store the food in their body so they break down the assimilated food at the faster rate and there is for that particular reason the respiratory system is extensively modified as in the example of the pigeon we can see that they have the two special feature the first feature is that that they have the compact lungs now see more um, why there is a need of the compactness because the animal should not be very heavy the reason is that um, if the animal will become very heavy or the bulky it will become very difficult for the animal for the flight purpose so for that particular reason their uh, compactness has been created now see we know the property of the respiratory system or respiratory surface is that there it should have the uh, large surface area so this large surface area is been compacted into the smaller size and they have many air sacs the air sacs are not actually the respiratory organ these are the accessory respiratory organ okay respiratory surface is the lungs only but these air sacs are the accessory respiratory organ which helps or which aids into the respiration now let us see the respiration now when we talk about the respiratory system so if uh, the bird they comprise of the 
respiratory tract then they have the lungs then they have the air sac but their respiratory tract is very 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 big and this respiratory tract comprises of nares and nasal sacs then glottis then rudimentary larynx trachea syrinx one by one let us discuss about the all this respiratory tract parts the first part nares and nasal sacs it is just like our nostrils so one pair of slit like opening you will find at the upper part of the beak which is known as the external layer now this external layer are overlapped by the sensitive pad of skin and this sensitive pad of skin is called as the cirrhae here you can see here you will find and this is called as the cirrhae and the neck let us move to the uh, this external layers now we know that external layers that means externally they will open out side that means to the medium we know that the respiratory efficient or the excellent respiratory surfaces it must be in contact with the uh, medium medium means it could be the air it could be the water so now they from outside this nares or the nasal sacs they open into the air and now when we talk about the inside inside so in inside they open into the nasal sacs and this nasal sacs opens into the pharynx by the internal layer so external layer open into the internal layer understood now next part is the glottis now glottis last lecture in the case of frog also we all have seen it is what it is just like a cap which prevents anything uh, goes inside the respiratory system or respiratory tract so <coughs> this glottis is present at the base of the tongue and it opens into the rudimentary larynx the point to be noted they don't have the proper larynx they have the rudimentary larynx which is situated at the interior most part of the trachea now when we talk about the trachea the, now we have the proper larynx because the, uh, our sound box is present into the larynx region but they don't have that they have the rudimentary larynx because they have the specialized sound box which we will discuss the larynx opens into the trachea see sequence you must remember first nares then glottis then trachea and the larynx will open into the trachea now trachea is a long cylindrical flexible tube like structure you can see into the diagram now this trachea is supported by the rings of cartilage now this trachea divides into the two bronchus okay you can see here these are the bronchus okay this your each bronchus will enter into the lungs of its its side now see trachea trachea from there the bronchus and from the this side bronchus is entering this side lung this side of bronchus is entering into the this side lung then the next part is the syrinx uh, syrinx you must remember student uh, this is very important for mcq type of question now see this syrinx is the sound box of bird and this is very 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 special and it is present only and only in the case of the birds okay so uh, this syrinx you will find it is present at the division of the trachea into the bronchus means when the trachea is entering into the bronchus so that particular time this syrinx or this sound box is present okay so immediately trachea and bronchus so when the trachea is dividing into the bronchus you can see it is uh, means making a fork like structure so at that particular y uh, you can see uh, neck is there so that particular side this syrinx is present so location you will all remember student 
the location is it is present at the division of trachea into the bronchus now this is as i told you it's a sound producing organ and it is a very characteristic features of the birds you will not find this particular organ in any of the vertebrate now this syrinx is an expanded chamber now and it is present at the posterior end now see interior is always up posterior is the uh, lower region okay so if it is the anterior region of the trachea this is the posterior region so where it is situated students this is situated at the posterior junction of the bronchia now it is supported by the last three trachea rings and first few half of the two bronchus you can see here trachea rings are present so two three trachea ring is supporting and this uh, lower part is supported by the bronchus region now this bronchus will help to form a resonating chamber now why there is a need of the resonance because the bird sings so for the singing a resonance is required so this is produced by this particular uh, syrinx it is acting as a resonancing chamber where a, a beautiful bird sounds which we hear the bird songs and all so it all 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 produces here okay now the most important next is the lungs now see you can see the lung is present into the pair so when you will uh, cut open the specimen you will find that they have they are bright open uh, bright red color and they are very spongy they are uh, present into the pleural cavities the bronchus is entering into the lungs and that is known as the pulmonary bronchus you can see bronchus here now see where the uh, respiratory tract open it opens into the nares then glottis rudimentary larynx then trachea and this bronchus now this bronchus is entering into the second part that is the respiratory surface or the lungs so it is entering into the lungs and the part which is in contact means this region which is directly connecting the trachea from the lungs that is known as the pulmonary bronchus because always we use the term pulmonary respiration and all for the lungs so the bronchus part which is entering inside the lungs will be called as the pulmonary lungs uh, sorry pulmonary bronchus so this bronchus continues as the main trunk to the distal end of the lung and that is known as the mesobronchus this means bronchus will enter inside now in uh, inside it is going and inside it will be called as the mesobronchus and from the mesobronchus what is happening secondary bronchi which uh, will form a branch tube like structure and thereafter the uh, small small means what is happening you know, this bronchus is dilating inside means uh, primary mesobronchus then uh, thereafter it will form the para bronchus so small 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 capillaries like structure will form now we all know why it is happened because of the formation of the high vascularization more vascularization more respiratory surface so this para bronchus are forming the capillaries and this parenchyma of the lungs shows the hexagonal areas which consisting of the central parabronchus surrounded by the air capillaries and the blood capillaries now this parabronchus and the air cap capillary together will work as the respiratory surface what i told you bronchus then mesobronchus from mesobronchus parabronchus will form now bronchus is a single tube then it will branch and it will form the mesobronchus and this mesobronchus will further branch and form fine 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 capillaries so that the uh, there is a increase of the respiratory surface so more respiratory surface more gaseous exchange so what will happen the more gaseous exchange will call, uh, make the more and more blood oxygenated thus a series of parabronchial tubules with looped air capillaries will carry on the respiration instead of the alveoli we have alveoli they have the bronchus para bronchus then air sacs 
Now, when we talk about the air sacs, so this air sacs are very important feature of the respiratory system of the birds. Now, four secondary bronchus do not stop the lung wall of each side. What happens? These bronchus they will pass through the wall of lungs and they will continue as the thin wall sac. And these air sacs are bladder-like. thin wall membranous non muscular and non vascular structure now these air sacs are many in the case of the pigeon when we talk about the pigeon the pigeon have the nine air sacs let us discuss about the air sacs i have not added in my slide because it is already given into the diagram the first and the main air chamber air sacs are the air chamber where the animal will uh, save the extra air now why do the animal require the extra air because when the animal fly uh, flying so that particular time means at the time of the flight they cannot breathe or they cannot inhale again and again so what do they do they save they save the extra uh, air into the pockets now these pockets are called as the air sacs so in the case of the pigeon there are nine air sacs the first air sacs now when see this extra outgrowth what you are observing these are the air sacs now when you will observe it carefully you will find this is looking a bigger and single rest all you will observe the pair so yes this is the interclavicular air sac it is the median or uh, main air sac and it is the largest air sac it has two ducts you can see the ducts are present one opening into the each lung now each side of this air sac gives of two extension clavicular air sac and humeral air sac means extra air sacs are also it is producing but these are the supplementary which is the part of this air sac only all this sacs communicate with the cavities of the bones you can see these are in entering inside the bones so the bones of the birds are pneumatic we all have uh, already studied it into the anatomy of the birds so these bones also uh, act as the extra uh, storage of the air and makes the bird uh, fly means the weight of the bird it reduces and the birds can fly high now second air sac cervical remember this type of terms no cervical means the neck region we always say we have problem into the cervical region so that means the neck uh, problem so cervical air sac means it is present into the uh, neck region so this is paired air sacs are placed near the base of neck and this lie in front of the lungs these are the cervical air sacs one and two is present into the pair the uh, each sac sends the diverticulum into the cervical vertebrae as well as the skull and these are connected with the lungs all air sacs will be connected with the lungs okay now anterior thoracic air sac this balloon okay there is one pair of anterior thoracic air sacs which is present into the ventral side of the lung they are in the close contact with the ribs now posterior thoracic anterior is always up posterior is set down so when we talk about the posterior thoracic air sac there is one pair of posterior thoracic air sac which overlap the posterior end of the corresponding lung now next is the abdominal this one so this abdominal air sac there is one pair of the abdominal air sac each one rising from the distal end of the lungs you can see they lie along the dorsal wall of the abdomen and this are ventral to the kidney it is in close contact of the small intestine so all these air sacs are not the respiratory organ but the accessory respiratory organ they act as the reservoir of the gases and they act like balloons which gives the buoyancy balance during the flight buoyancy means the uh, balance maintenance now let us see the mechanism of the respiration uh, but before that once again we will uh, just 
revise it what we have learned we have learned in the case of the birds the respiratory tract it opens from the nares or uh, and this nares enters into the nasal sac and this nasal sac connects with the pharynx and then glottis then glottis is connected with the rudimentary larynx means this uh, why it is called as rudimentary because it has no role with the sound production then there after long trachea trachea we have seen is covered with the cartilaginous ring then there after this trachea is dividing into the bronchus but at the point of the division it is having the specialized structure that is called as a syrinx and this syrinx is acting as the resonance uh, resonating chamber and here the sound means the beautiful bird sound is produced here and it is a very special uh, very special structure which is present only 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 in the birds then thereafter we have learned about the lungs we have seen this bronchus it enters into the lungs and this uh, forms the capillaries or you can say the branching so the first a uh, uh, bronchus part which is entering into the lungs is called as the pulmonary bronchus and this pulmonary bronchus will gives out to the mesobronchus and this mesobronchus will give the para bronchus this para bronchus are the fine 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 capillaries which in contact with the air sac uh, sorry air capillaries they looped out and they carry on the respiration no alveolars are present then thereafter we have learned about the air sac we have learned there are nine air sac in which intraclavicular air sac is single rest all air sac that means the four pairs are present into the pair so what are those pairs cervical present into the neck region then anterior thoracic then there are the posterior thoracic then abdominal air sac all these air sacs are the uh, accessory respiratory organ which aids into the respiration by acting as the reservoir of the gases so this is about the respiratory system or res now how the respiration occurs we will talk about now what is the mechanism now see when the bird at rest and when the bird at fly both are the different conditions so when the bird will rest that particular time inspiration will occur and that particular time the intercostal muscle will help to uh, respire so to respire or to take the breathe or to take the air inside now what is going to be happen and this intercostal muscle will contract so automatically the ribs and sternum will be lowered so when the ribs and sternum will be lowered that particular time the abdominal cavity and thoracic cavity automatically will enlarge so when it will enlarge what will happen the lung pressure will automatically will be dilated so whatever air is present inside the lungs it will go into the air sac because now here pressure is reduced here uh, from lower pressure there automatically the air will go from the lungs to the air sac now this lungs are empty now so what is going to be happen exchange of gas uh, will take place inside the capillaries this is the inspiration now how the expiration or the exhalation occur this is brought about now see inspiration co opposite will occur here so what will happen movement of thoracic and abdominal muscle will uh, cause means here the thoracic muscle and the abdominal muscle will contract so that particular time the cavity will decrease in the size so what will happen it will cause the pressure on the lung now when the pressure on the lung will increase so definitely the lungs will empty outside so whatever uh, gas is present now this gas is what this is the carbon dioxide whatever gas is present inside the lungs that will go outside that means uh, from the nostril it will go outside 
by compression of the air sacs the air goes into the capillaries so this is the secondary supply now see lung is empty the lung has exhaled whatever air is present student uh, hope you are understanding what is happening when the animal is taking inspiration okay and that means when the animal is taking the fresh air that time the lungs are empty okay in our case what happens when we breathe in our lungs get full right but in the case of the bird it is not happening in the case of the bird the situation is totally different the lungs are empty out now where this air is going from the lungs when the animal is breathing the fresh air that particular time the pressure into the lung is reducing and the air is entering inside the air sac for the reservoir purpose understood and whatever gaseous exchange is happening here so that particular gaseous exchange will increasing the pressure on the lung and this will reduce the abdominal cavity as well as the thoracic cavity and the uh, exhalation will occur now when the exhalation occur that particular time the lungs will be filled out now how the lungs will fill the at the time of the exhalation this air cavity will dump air inside the lungs understood so this is the secondary supply of the fresh air to the air capillaries at the time of flight the inhalation or mechanism uh, of breathing will be totally different what will happen the skeleton will be rigid because to support the flight so the sternum will become immovable a area of abdominal and thoracic cavity will increase or decrease by the movement of the pectoral muscle pectoral means the shoulder muscle the pressure of viscera against the air sac will cause air to circulate now sternum is immovable that means the animal is not taking air so that particular time this air sac will empty out into the uh, lungs and that particular time lungs will carry out the respiration so respiration take place by the movement of the sternum towards the vertebral column and away from it so when the bird fly faster rate of respiration will be higher so this is about the mechanism of respiration once again we will revise it see we will revise we understood respiration mechanism in two mode one when the bird is resting and another when the bird is flying so when bird is resting that particular time when the bird breathing that means when the inspiration occur so that particular time ribs will raise and sternum area will be lowered so what will happen in this abdominal cavity and thoracic cavity will increase and because of that the lung pressure will reduce see when the bird is breathing in at the time of resting that particular time pressure on the lung will be reduced this is most important point to be remember at the time of inhalation pressure into the lung is reducing and this air is drawn inside the air sac so uh, from the lungs air is going inside the air sac so whatever air gaseous exchange take place into the air capillary the process will cause the uh, lung pressure and this will cause the thoracic and abdominal muscle to decrease into the size and when the thoracic and the uh, abdominal cavity will reduce into the size this will cause the air go out of the lungs and finally uh, out of the lungs means from it will nasal cavity it will go to the air and the fresh air will take so second round of the uh, respiration will start and at the time of the flight the point to be remember that the skeleton become rigid and sternum become the immovable so ab area of abdominal cavity and thoracic cavity which increase or decrease it is caused because of the pectoral muscle of the flight now your sternum will not help out the pressure of the viscera against the air sacs will cause to the air to circulate and the respiration take place also by the movement of sternum 
towards the vertebral column and away from it when the bird flies faster the rate of respiration will be rapid so this is all about the respiration mechanism into the birds with the help of the example pigeon we understood now next lecture now what is the next class uh, we have learned pisces then we have learned aves amphibians aves now next lecture or the next class we will be talking about the hierarchy who uh, which animal comes the complex animal most complex animal mammal so next lecture we will talk about respiration into the mammals so for today uh, at this note we will stop